Part A, make a table showing the quantity supplied and quantity demanded at these different prices. So, just have a table with the price, quantity supplied, and quantity demanded. The price is going from $1 to $5. And to do this, we just take each price, so we'll start with this one, and we plug it into that P right there. So 200 times 1 is 200, minus 100 gives you 100. If the price of apples is $1, that means farmers want to go and sell 100 of them. And then price of $2, 200 times 2, that's 400, minus 100, that gives you 300. If the price of apples goes up to $2, all of a sudden farmers are going to want to sell 300 of them. And we just keep going. At $3, 200 times 3 is 600, minus 100. Farmers want to sell 500 apples a week at that price. And this is easier with a calculator, so I'll just go through and show you the next two. End up being 700 and 900. And now we've done the supply. We've done how much farmers want to sell at these different prices. So then we'll go and find the quantity demanded. How many apples do people want to buy at these different prices? Well, we do it about the same way. We take each of these different P's and plug them into the P on the demand formula. So 100 times 1 is 1. 800 minus 100 is 700. If apples are only a dollar, people want to buy 700 apples a week. If they're two dollars, well, we plug a 2 in there. 100 times 2 is 200. 800 minus that 200 is 600. And so on. You could get a calculator out and do these. I've done them beforehand. So I'll just let you know that these end up being the answers. And that's all it takes to find the table of quantity supplied and quantity demanded. You just keep plugging in your different values of P and getting your different answers out. And that's part A. That's also called a supply schedule and a demand schedule. They might be using that word instead of table. But that's still the same process there. So then part B, what's the equilibrium price and quantity? Well, we've got this table here, so we want to know where do the amount of apples that the farmers want to sell, where does that match the amount of our apples people want to buy? It's not at $1, it's not at $2, it's here at $3. If the price is 300, if the price is $3, the farmers want to sell 500 apples to people, and the people want to buy 500 apples from the farmers. That's what makes everybody happy. That's the equilibrium there. And then part C is making a graph of the supply and demand. Anytime that you make a graph in economics, you're going to put quantity on the bottom and price along the side. That's just how they do things in economics. So our price, we've got one, two, three, four, five dollars. And we'll just remember quantity is going by hundreds as well. So if price is $1, quantity supplied is $100, we'll go to $1 and go over to $100. And we're really just doing the XY points like we did in algebra. If the price is $2 and the quantity is $300, go to price is 2, quantity is 300 At a price of $3, the quantity is 500 And remember to label your graphs. I'm just going to label every other one to give us some idea of what's going on. So price of $4 lines up to a quantity of 700 And then a price of $5 goes with a quantity supplied of 900 And that, when you connect the line, is your supply curve. A demand curve, you do about the same way. At $1, the quantity demanded is 700 It's over there. $2, quantity demanded is 600 $3, 500 which is that same point we had before. $4, and 400 $5, and 300 And putting those in a line is our demand curve.
and in the middle there is that equilibrium point that they both had in common. And one thing that you can use to help you remember your economics graphs is that it goes in alphabetical order. Demand D, equilibrium E, and then supply S, and they will always go in that order left to right. Part D, solve for the equilibrium quantity and supply algebraically. So using algebra, you take your quantity supplied and your quantity demand, and you set them equal to each other. So quantity supplied, that is the 200p minus 100. Quantity demanded, that's this one, 800 minus 100p. And from here, it's just an algebra problem. Solve for p. So step one on this kind of problem is we need to get all the p's on the same side. So let's get rid of these negative p's. Let's say plus 100p there. And whatever we do on the right side, we need to also do on the left side, plus 100 here. So here, 200p plus 100p is 300p. This comes straight down. This comes straight down. Minus 100p and plus 100p, those cancel out. All right, now that we just have 1p, we need to get it by itself. So our next step is going to be to get rid of this 100. To get rid of a minus 100, we use its opposite. We use plus 100. So minus 100 and plus 100, opposites that cancel out. 300p comes straight down. 800 plus 100, that gives you 900. So now we have 300p equals 900. When we just have one thing right next to the p there, we need to divide those up to get the p by itself. So we will divide by 300 on both sides. So those cancel out. 900 by 300 turns out to be 3. We get a price of $3 the same as we did when we tried out a lot of different possible prices and found out three dollars was where it matched up. And that's our equilibrium price, which you also call PE with a little e for equilibrium. Of course, that's just the price. We still need to get the equilibrium quantity. But that's not too bad to do that. To get the equi equilibrium quantity, we just take that price plug it into either of those two formulas. doesn't matter which one because they will both give you the same quantity. That's what made it the equilibrium. So we'll just do this one here. 200 times 3 minus 100. 200 times 3 is 600. 600 minus 100 is 500. That is the equilibrium quantity QE. So same thing we got doing it the other way, but you are going to be, but depending on your class, you might be expected to know how to do it algebraically. I think most economics classes, they will expect you to know how to solve out an algebra equation like this to find the equilibrium.